It's an eight-game Monday night in the NBA. DeMar DeRozan and the red-hot San Antonio Spurs. Mamba win up against, well, his former team just a few days ago, but this is the league-leading Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. Just a couple of teams in action. While elsewhere in the NBA, the Timberwolves fired team president and head coach Tom Thibodeau Sunday. The move came after a 22-point win over the Lakers. We'll have more discussion. While the Houston Rockets are 11-2 in their last 13 games, they welcome the team sitting atop the Western Conference, the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets are looking to extend their five-game winning streak with tip-off just after 8 Eastern on NBA League Pass. Hey everybody, welcome into our NBA TV studios. This is Game Time Live. I'm Kristen Ledlow, alongside the Czar, Mike Fratello, our Hall of Fame coach, Kevin McHale. I said the league leading Denver Nuggets, but the Western Conference leading Denver Nuggets. Yeah. I'm not used to the Western Conference leading team not leading the league as well. And not saying Golden State Warriors when you say or Western right, Conference yeah. leading it. A lot of stuff. You can say it's a whole new thing it's in a night, lot going 2019, on. baby. For it to be January and for us to be having these conversations, it's a lot. But first, let's discuss what James Harden is doing in Houston with 10 straight games, scoring at least 35 points. Now, uh, guys, he could pass Michael Jordan with an 11th straight 35-plus point performance against the Nuggets. It, of course, is not going to come easy against the Western Conference leading team. Kevin, let me go back to the old days for a second. Do you remember when players used to come into training camp to get in shape? Yes. And then eventually 15, 20 games into it, you'd see them round out to what they are, really. But nowadays that doesn't happen. You come in shape. <laughs> but Harden looked like he was from the old days yes, the way he, he first came in. Yeah, he's a little heavier to start the season off. But he's on a roll right now. I tell you what, as a player sometimes, you just get on. You, you step out there and the basket seems like it's three times as big as it normally looks. Everything seems slow. It's, you, 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 like you look around and you, you wonder why, why is everybody playing so slow and why isn't everybody trying harder? And you get into a groove where the game is so smooth and everything's so easy. He's in one of those, um, right now he's in one of those just kind of runs where everything is just perfect for him. He's making such a, and he shoots that step back three. Like I swear that's such a hard shot. I, all you people go home and don't shoot a 24 uh uh, foot step back to be shoot a 15 foot step yeah. back. It's hard to jump back and shoot 15, 18 footers. He's kind of mastered that shot and just playing great. Well, let's first listen to what Rockets coach Mike D'Antoni had to say prior to this game. He's so skilled. He's big. He's got a big body um, uh, and just skilled. Shoots threes, pass the ball really well. He's got all kinds of moves. I mean, just keep going on. Nah, he's just a great player. Pick and roll. Huh? They've been running a lot of inverted pick and roll with, with Murray screening. Uh, what, what's unique about that? To make it well, it's inverted. That's what's yeah. unique about it. Uh, because you usually don't have a seven footer that can handle the ball and pass like he can. And it puts pressure on uh, when uh, Murray pops. He's such a good three point shooter that if you stop it with the little guy, which you have to, then you got to get back to Murray who's making shots all over the place. So it's a challenge to be able to do it. You got to get up, you know, you got to do it quick and hope for the best. We always talk about the parity in the Western Conference. Denver's at the top. Does it surprise you at all, and, and how have they been able to do it? Well, I think anytime Golden State's not at the top, it kind of surprises you. So, yeah, to a certain extent, now you knew they were good. They've been good the last couple of years, and just by being in the West, they hadn't made the playoffs. But uh, uh, they keep getting better, keep getting more mature as players. They have a lot of young players, and they're getting a lot better, and Murray's playing out of his mind, and Jokic, and uh, uh, so you you kind of see they're getting better, being completely on top. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a surprise, but it's not a, it's definitely, you can understand why, because they're that good. But the Rockets have won nine consecutive home games during James Harden's streak. They've won 11 of their last 13 overall. Coach, you just challenged the viewers to go home and try to shoot a step back, even 15 footer. So is that what has impressed you most about the numbers that he's put up? Or is it perhaps the wins that he's led his team to? Well, it's really, it's winning because it's that's what this league's all about. Mike, you've been in the league for a long time. It's about, you know, it's one thing. If you have talent, you can go put up numbers. And you coach guys that can put up big numbers. I always thought that the, the really tough thing in the NBA is put up win after win after win. They've won nine in a row at home. And it, it's due partially just because of his individual play. But, you know, guys are making down shots for him, too. James is a good distributor. And they're knocking down shots. Mike, and you know how important that is. Guys have got to make shots. We're talking about the step back, Kristen. It's tough to get a shot off in the NBA. Yeah. For somebody who's never played, you don't understand what it's like, how much energy you need and you use up just to get an open look or get the shot off. You've got a guy who controls the ball as much as Harden, 
and then he takes basically whatever shot he wants to get off. And these aren't defenders who aren't trying. He's right. a great yeah. athlete, and you try to put your best guy on him, and he makes him look silly. So it's, it's incredible what he's done now, and he's playing at that level. Like Kevin said, sometimes you just feel like you can't be stopped. And also, when he puts his head down and goes to the hole, I love when he starts games like that. When I coach him, I'd always say, James, just get to the line. Just put your head down. It gets fouls on your best defender because immediately the best defender comes out there, and you want to set the tone right away as a defender. You get up into him. Boy, you pick up a couple of fouls in that first quarter. You play defense completely different the whole game. James sometimes will settle for threes, but when he's putting his head down and attacking and shooting the three, you know, he's unguardable, really is. Do you see this current usage rate as perhaps a problem as the team tries to make a playoff push in the Western Conference as he has had to do what he's had to do without Chris Paul in the lineup? You know, I think usage rate is also relative. I just think he has the ball a lot. But everybody used to play 36, 37, 38 minutes. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying everybody did it. Hell, I over average over 40 a couple years minutes, you know. And I, How do you feel know, now, by the way? <laughs> beat up, but I'm old. Uh, but uh, no, I... Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think he has the ball a lot. I think he's. I think James is better coming off screens and doing stuff, just mixing it in. But he doesn't play that one anymore. He, he has the ball. I think when Chris Paul has the ball, it, give, it gives. It'll give James when he, Chris Paul comes back. It'll give James a chance to rest a little bit while he's on the court. Chris, I got a story for you. Many years ago, as a very young coach, we played the Boston Celtics second exhibition game of the year. Bill Fitch was the head coach of Boston. When the game ended, I looked at the stat sheet and I saw Larry Bird. 42 minutes. So on the way out, I ran into Coach Fitch, and I said, Coach, as a young coach, just trying to learn, are you concerned you played Larry 42 minutes? And he looked at me and went, no, he's going to play 44, 45 every night during the season. <laughs> yeah. He's got to get in shape for it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. What he told me, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, on Saturday, Nikola Jokic scored a season-high 39 points in 34 minutes, along with 12 rebounds, 6 assists. He could perhaps be the best player that we have not been including in our MVP conversation regularly. But first, let's listen to what Nuggets head coach Mike Malone had to say on Nikola and on this matchup moving forward. Can you first comment on Nikola Jokic getting Western Conference Player of the Week? Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's great for him. Uh, one thing it says is that obviously we, we had a good week as a team going 3-0. and uh, But when you look at his uh, productivity, his efficiency, uh, and, and what stands out to me is the playmaking. Uh, you know, the, the scoring, the rebounding, we've seen that. But to be, I think, nine assists per game uh, is pretty remarkable and historical in its own right. So uh, happy for him. Uh, but more importantly, we have a, a huge game tonight, start of a five-game and seven-night challenge. Uh, last time you played the Rockets, you actually did a pretty good job of holding down James Harden, but they won anyway. So uh, how do you go about it tonight? Same kind of thoughts or, or change it up a little bit? You know, in the first half, uh, we were up one. He had three points in the first half. Um, you know, but other guys were getting off from the three-point line. And then we changed up matchups and uh, uh, game plan at halftime, and he had 19 points in the second half, and other guys were limited. So it's really pick your poison. He's playing at a whole nother level right now. Um, um, MVP, all that, it's, it's really kind of historical what he's doing. Um, but when he is in a rhythm like that, different looks, different matchups, different people guarding him, and uh, just uh, try, try to change it up a little bit, keep him off balance a little bit. But it's going to be a hell of a challenge because right now, uh, last whatever how many games 40 points a night taking 17 threes um, and when you think you play good defense he just shoots right over you anyways uh, Jamal Gary and Nicola Paul had really good numbers they only played together a little bit in the last couple of games uh, are you tempted to start Gary and Millsap tonight yeah it's obviously uh, those guys especially after that Charlotte game both those guys are really good in that game off the bench um, so when I say after the game, our bench played well tonight, that's with two starters, obviously. Um, but no, there's no doubt, you know, those guys, um, whether it's tonight or the next couple of games, they'll, they'll definitely be back in the lineup where they belong. You know, uh, me bringing them off the bench is just slowly working them back in, getting game rhythm, getting uh, their confidence back after being out for, uh, for a lengthy period. But uh, you can see, as I can see, Chris, that they have a rhythm, they have a confidence, and uh, they're more than ready to be back in the starting lineup. So while the statistical performances by Nikola Jokic tend to stand out, the Nuggets have put forth a balanced offensive effort this season. They lead the league in assist percentage at 65.5%. What is it, uh, Coach, that's working so well when it comes to the Nuggets' ball movement? Well, Michael Malone has gotten his matches across about sharing the basketball, and he has a couple unselfish players like Jokic, who isn't ranked in points per game, isn't ranked 
middle of the pack way down there for rebounds, but seventh in the league in assists right now. So this is a team that has bought into the concept of sharing the basketball. He sold them on depth. One of the best players hasn't even played basically for the entire season, but they've taken care of business at home. 16 and three in their building, 10 and eight on the road. Do you think perhaps that he is in the MVP race, despite not being in the regular conversation that we have that tends to center around LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo and now even James Harden? As he keeps on putting up these numbers, of course he's going to be. And as they keep on winning, uh, Jokic is going to get all of his love from their, their record. If they can continue to win and win at a high level, people are going to say, okay, what's driving this? And as you said, Mike, they have a great ability to move the ball. Part of the reason they can move the ball so well is they play five out a lot, which is the new trend in the NBA. But Jokic is such a good passer. Some of the teams play five out, play a five out, and they don't, the guys can't move the ball. They, they get, to get stuck in big guys' hands. He, he just keeps moving the ball. He throws passes. Like, let's see him throw passes all over the floor from the backcourt to the front court. High post, low post passing. But I like their five out action. There's a lot of room for a lot of guys to make plays, and Jokic is one of them. And as you watch this team from top to bottom, what is it that they lack when it comes to contending for a championship? We may have to go back to last year to answer that question. The fact that they went down to game 82, lost, and did not get into the playoffs. And the entire summer, Michael Malone did nothing but try and bring this team together with whatever he was doing, where they met up at places, worked out together. From day one, coming back to training camp, the message was delivered. We missed out by one game of making the playoffs this year. We're on a mission this year. And he put that carrot out in front of him. They're after it right now, and that's why they're playing as well as they are. I'd say for them, it's the ability to get stops on demand and scores on demand. I mean, because, you know, like Red Arbeck used to always say, if you're down three with a minute to go, you're going to have to score. I promise you, if you want to yeah. win the game. He said, I'm not a great math guy, but I know we're down three. <laughs> and you're going to have to go out and score. So I, I think all great teams have the ability to get stops on demand and scores on demand. Like you, 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 With them, is it going to be Millsip? Is it going to be Jokic? What player are you going to run? How are you going to get the ball? They have such an equal opportunity in the offense. But sometimes late in the game, you've got to give your best player against that best matchup the ball in his best spot and let him go to work and get a shot for you. And then stops on demand where everybody's on there and you, like you know you're going to go out and there when you play on championship caliber teams, you go like, hey, we need a stop and you just feel it in your heart you're going to go get that stop. And you go out there and I think that's what you need. That's the next level for these guys. Young team making that jump is that down two with a minute to go and you win that game. You win it by three or four because you get stops, you score. And that's all, that builds confidence. So that's, to me, that's the next level for these guys is stops and scores on demand. How are they going to do it? Do it as a group defensively, but offensively. Who are they going to go to and where on the floor is that guy going to get it for them? Well, there's more news surrounding the Rockets organization as the team traded guard Michael Carter-Williams in cash to Chicago for a protected second-round pick in what's a salary cap maneuver by Houston. The Bulls will waive MCW, whose contract would have become guaranteed for the season Monday afternoon. Coming up next on Game Time Live, we're going to take a look at what's next for the Timberwolves and break down their players-only game against the Thunder. Milwaukee Bucks taking on the Utah Jazz. That game's going to be on NBA League Pass just minutes from now. now. The Jazz have won two in a row, both on the road, three of their last four overall. Meanwhile, the Bucks are coming off a loss, and they haven't lost consecutive games this season. A perfect 10-0 following a loss. Let's hear Coach Quinn Snyder with Craig Bowlerjack prior to the game. This is game number 41 tonight. What's your thought? Well, it's, it's hard to believe. Uh, we were walking on the, the uh, just coming to practice and walking on the street today, and um, you know you still see some Christmas decorations. And Christmas seems like it was two months ago. So um, it's happened fast, and we're uh, you know we're growing. I think we're we're a better team now than when we started the year, and that's to me. I know you know you, you'd love for the record to. Yeah, I think you always want the record to be better. Right. Um, but I think the you know as we as we continue to play and tonight and the next game and beyond, if we can continue to improve, um, that'll serve us well. You know, speaking of getting better, listen. Let me take you back to Detroit because you were down 18, but a dynamic second half, offensively and defensively. You guys are very active, and Donovan seemed to be the guy that led the charge. Yeah, you know, really, and, and you mentioned Donovan in the second half, and he certainly did. I think um, in the second quarter. 
Um, really, when Dante and Tabo were in the game, the way those two guys played, and it was tough to see both of them, you know, take an injury because they, those two guys, you could really feel. Tabo played the rest of the second quarter. Dante had like five assists in six minutes and hard to lose them in that game and would have also been really easy with those two guys playing well for the rest of the team to kind of let up and and that didn't happen and you know Donovan as much or more than anyone um, really midway through the third quarter he came back in and he really dug in defensively and I think he just the game just started kind of unfolding for him and he was instinctive and he was really good. Yeah, he really was. Uh, Coach, uh, finally we're in Milwaukee which is the home of Yantas Antetokounmpo and when you speak of him, I mean, just one word pops up. It's just unique. Yeah. Maybe you have more. Terrific, yeah. There's a lot of superlatives yeah. that you can use to describe him. Um, and Bud's done an unbelievable job, you know, helping him um, bring all those talents out kind of exponentially. But um, some of the statistics that you see um, that are unique, nobody scored more in the, point, in the paint um, since Shaq. So you look at a guy and, you know, he's basically a modern day Shaq. He's not doing it with post-ups all the time. He's doing it more off, you know, dribble penetration and transition. But um, he's a really unique player and, and that makes it, it's hard because he's so good, but it's also hard because he's so different. Coach Snyder also mentioned Dante Exum's ankle injury. He's reportedly going to be out for the next two weeks. So before I ask you about their matchup with the Milwaukee Bucks, I want to ask why the slow start for the Utah Jazz, a young team that we were expecting to see take a big jump at the start of the season. I think a couple of things that jump out at me. When you look at their record right now, they've played 16 home games. They've played 24 away games, and here they are in Milwaukee again tonight. And the fact that they have a 20 and 20 record, just a game and a half out of the playoffs in the Western Conference, I think says a whole lot. The same thing is Donovan Mitchell didn't start out the season the same way that he finished up last season. But so did a couple other guys in the league that we've talked about tonight. Didn't start out great like James Harden, mm -hmm. but he's on fire right now. So if Donovan Mitchell gets back to the form that we saw last year where he was just simply sensational, and then a couple of these nagging little injuries where guys miss three, four, five games, you couple that with a brutal schedule, this team's in a great spot to make a run in the second half of the season. Let me ask you, Kevin, because you and I talk a lot about these young players who the team tends to, well, the league tends to figure out in their mm -hmm. sophomore season. Do you think that that's the case here with Donovan? No question. When you take the league by storm like Mitchell did, especially the second half of last year, everybody now, you're the number one guy in the scouting report. So the coach stands in front of the group in the morning before the game and says, this is how we're stopping Donovan Mitchell. I'm putting my best defenders on him. I'm forcing him left. He likes to pull up. Whatever your tendencies are, they say we're taking your favorite tendency away, making you play to your, your weaknesses, not your strength. And I, as a young player in this league, it's like a chess match. You start off with the same opening in your chess match five, six times in a row. Finally, the guy says, you're not doing that. You're not beating me with that. You have to change up. I always, I've told this story before. I remember the first time I played in a playoff series against really talented players that were really smart, were Kyle Wall Jones and Bobby Jones, and they played for Philadelphia 76ers. So I had the move where I'd fake left, turn around, fade away, jump shot. Hell, Bobby Jones jumped before I did. He blocked it. I mean, he just, I, I didn't have anybody block that shot since I don't know when. And I was like, dang, like, I got to come up with plan B here. They made you play to plan B. They took away your favorite move, and that made me a better player. And I said that Donovan Mitchell er earlier this year was going to look at film. Quinn's a really good coach, Snyder. He's going to figure out what the defenses are doing to him, and he's good enough that he'll go to plan B and C and get counters. So I think it's a tough schedule, like Mike said. And then I think it's just, you know, Donovan, the league caught up to him. Now he's figuring out what they're doing, and he's making, making the next jump. So it's just you're always doing this. As a young player, and you're trying to get here, you just you do, you do this all the way up and he's just on his you know just stages of growing up that ladder and they're taking on a Milwaukee Bucks team that's sitting